In this video, we're going to look at factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to zero. And we're specifically going to look at um, what I call the target product target sum method. Some other uh, people call it the ac method, and I'm sure there's other names for it. But that's the method that I'm strictly going to use in these videos and for these examples. Uh, so what we look for when we're trying to factor, remember what factoring is. It's like the opposite of multiplying. We're like creating a multiplication statement. And so we might have something like 2x plus 1 times 5x minus 2 as our final answer, uh, final answer. So let's see what happens. If we go in reverse here and we use the distributive property, we would have 10x squared minus 4x plus 5x minus 2. That would be 10x squared plus x minus 2. So this is what we would have started with if we're factoring, and this is where we would want to end up. It can be a little bit tricky, so we're going to go through it uh, step by step, uh, hopefully in a way that is very clear to you. So huh, how would we go from here all the way back up to here? Well, it does require knowing factoring by grouping. So if you need to rewatch that video, you might want to do that at this time. Um, but what we do for the target product target sum method is we try to find a combination of two numbers. And those two numbers, when we multiply them, their product, so when we multiply these two numbers, we're looking for two numbers that when we multiply them, their product is equivalent to the product of A times C. Also, these two numbers, we want them to add up to the value of B. So keep in mind when we're talking about our target product and target sum, we're using the coefficients and the constants. So when we're talking about target product, target sum, we don't necessarily use the variables that are within the problem. So the target product is going to be A times C, and the target sum would be B. Um, so in this case, let's see, just going back here, just to look at an example, our target product here would be negative 20. So here I'm just going to say target product, because A and C, that's 10 and negative 2, is negative 20. And then our target sum, which is B, would be, well, there is no number in front of X. When there's no number being multiplied by x, we assume that it's a 1. So our target sum would be 1. So what we'd want to do here is we'd want to find a combination of numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add up to 1. And you should always start with the two numbers that you just used. You just multiplied two numbers to get to your target product. So check to see if you add those two numbers together, do you end up with the target sum? So does 10 plus negative 2 equal 1? No, it doesn't. So that would not be our winning combination. I like to write down any combination, whether it works or not. So I'm just going to say, okay, one combination I tried is 10 and negative 2, and that didn't work. You can also check, because it multiplies to something negative, you can try switching the sign. So having negative 10 and positive 2. But I know that won't work, because that, that, if that was going to be the case, it would add up to the negative of what the target sum is, and that, that 8 is not the opposite of 1. All right, so it's not 10 and 2. So what are two other numbers that multiply to negative 20? Well, how about 4 and negative 5? OK, so 4 times negative 5 multiplies to negative 20. Does 4 plus negative 5 add up to 1? No, it adds up to negative 1. So there we go. I have the opposite sum that I'm looking for. So that means that while 4 and negative 5 is not the correct combination, negative 4 and positive 5 is the correct combination. So those multiply to negative 20, and they add up to 1. So this would be our winning combination. This is what we're looking for in the target product target sum method. Then what we would do from here is we would take these, and these would replace the middle. We call this expanding. So we're going to turn our trinomial into a polynomial with four terms. We replace the middle term, so we would replace this 1x with negative 4x plus 5x. Remember, we just agreed that negative 4 plus 5 added up to 1. Therefore, negative 4x plus 5x should add up to 1x, or just x. So we would replace the middle, which you can see when we do the distribution. There it is. So I rewrote, we would rewrite 1x as negative 4x and 5x, leaving the first term and last term intact. And then we would do factoring by grouping. Um, once we do factoring by grouping, we pull out the greatest common factor from each grouping, see if we have any common factors between the two terms, and then it should end up looking like this. OK, so let's try our first example. This time we're given 12x squared minus 5x minus 2. In this case, a is 12, b is negative 5 and c is negative 2. So what we're looking for is a combination of numbers that multiply 
to whatever a times c is, that's 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. And the target sum, which is the value of b, uh, negative 5. So let's list some possibilities, some numbers that multiply to negative 24. Let's start with the two that we just used, 12 and negative 2. Now we can use some uh, logic here. I know that if these two numbers, one is negative and one is positive because they multiply to something negative, because when we add them, they add to something negative, we know that the bigger of the two numbers must be the negative. So I know that this definitely can't be it. I'm going to switch this sign and put the negative in front of the 12. It still multiplies to negative 24, but now when I add them, they're going to add up to something negative. Do they add up to negative 5? No, they don't. So this was not the combination. Okay, what else do we know multiplies to 24? How about 6 and 4? The 6 will be negative, the 4 positive. We know they multiply to negative 24. They do not add up to negative 5. That adds up to negative 2. Okay, what's another combination you can think of that multiplies to negative 24? How about negative 8 and positive 3? Works for the target product. If we add negative 8 and positive 3, we do end up with negative 5. So we did find our winning combination. And of course, if you found the winning combination without doing some rejects, that's fine too. Obviously, you don't have to try ones that don't work if you know what does work. Okay, so now what we do, we take that winning combination and we're going to replace the minus 5x with these coefficients for x. So we're going to have 12x squared minus 8x plus 3x um, minus 2. And generally for me as a rule of thumb, if you have the choice, if you have one negative and one positive, I usually put the negative first. That way I don't have anything weird going on here, which sometimes you can avoid it, but if you can, I suggest putting the negative first when possible. Okay, now from here we're going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to group together the first two terms, group together the second two terms. The greatest common factor of 12x squared and 8x is 4x. If I divide 4x here, I'm going to be left with 3x. And here I'll be left with 2. The greatest common factor between 3x and 2 is 1. And this is that rare time where I actually put a 1. I use it as like basically like a placeholder. And then if I divide 1, it doesn't change anything. Now I have two terms. My two terms have a GCF. They have a common factor of 3x minus 2. I'm going to pull that common factor out. And then I multiply it to the leftovers, 4x plus 1. If you want to check your work, you can always multiply this back out and see if you get back to where we started. We're going to look at a few more examples of factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. The first one we're going to look at, well actually it's the second one because there was the first one previously, is negative, 12y, uh, negative 10y squared minus 7y plus 6. So with any method of factoring, and I need to make this very clear and in big flashing letters, always check to see if there's a GCF of the three terms. And if there is, factor that out first. Uh, the other thing here, which I notice in B, is that the leading term has a negative in front. We generally don't want that to be the case. So even though the, the greatest common factor of these three terms is 1, we do want to factor out the negative just so that that leading term is positive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative or a negative 1. If it's helpful for you to factor out a negative 1, you should do that. All it does is it's going to change the signs. So this will become 10y squared plus 7y minus 6. Now, from here on out, that negative will just be brought down, but otherwise it doesn't affect any part of target product, target sum. So now that I have this, this is positive. GCF is 1 for the three terms. I'm going to identify my target product. Remember, target product is a times c. And in this case, a is 10, b is 7, and c is negative 6. So a times c would be 10 times negative 6, which is negative 60. The target sum is just the value of the middle term. That would be b, and that would be 7. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 60 and add up to 7. If we check the ones we were given, 10 and negative 6, that's not going to work. So I'm just going to write it down just so I know I've tried it, and it doesn't work. I'll just put a little x by it. OK, two other numbers that multiply to 60. How about 12 and 5? Uh, one of them needs to be negative. Let's make the 5 negative. Why am I making the 5 negative? Well, because the sum is positive, so the bigger number should be positive. 12 times negative 5 is negative 60. 12 plus negative 5 is 7, so I found my winning combination. If you check any other combination of uh, two factors that multiply to negative 60, none of them are going to add up to 7. This is the only combination. So what we're going to do with our winning combination 
is we're going to expand the middle. So we're going to replace this 7y with 12y and negative 5y. As I mentioned, if I have the choice to put the negative either first or second, I'm going to put it first, and then I don't have to deal with it later. So we're going to rewrite this. I'm going to put my negative out in front. We have 10y squared minus 5y plus 12y minus 6. Now from here, I can factor by grouping. So ignoring those parentheses, I'm just going to create littler parentheses inside. Because there's a positive there, I don't have to do anything weird to the second half of my groupings. And now we pull out the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor of my first grouping will be 5y. So we're going to have 5y. When I divide it into 10y squared, will be 2y. When I divide 5y into itself, we will get 1. Well, negative 1. Plus 12y and 6 have a GCF of 6. When I divide 6 into 12y, that would be 2y. When I divide 6 into itself, that leaves me with 1. Now from here, inside the bigger parentheses, I've, I have two terms, um, and they have a greatest common factor. So the first term actually has three factors, 5y and 2y minus 1. The second term has two factors, 6 and 2y minus 1. So both uh, terms have a factor of 2y minus 1. Pull that negative out in front. I'm going to put my 2y minus 1. And then what's left here, 5y. And what's left here is 6. So this would be the final factored version of question uh, B. In question C, we're going to look at factoring 3b squared plus 2b minus 16. Hopefully this won't take up as much space since I already have filtered my, made, made my way over into the middle of it. This one does not have a GCF besides one, the three terms, 3b squared, 2b, and negative 16. So we don't have to worry about factoring out a greatest common factor. Um, from here, I'm just going to label A is 3, B is 2, and C is negative 16. So my target product, my A times C target product, is 3 times negative 16, which is negative 48. The target sum, which is B, is 2. So we're looking for two numbers that when I multiply them, they multiply to negative 48. And when I add them, they add up to positive 2. OK, so let's see what that could be. Check A and C, 3 and negative 16, or in this case, actually, should be 16 and negative 3. That doesn't work. How about 6 and 8, where the 8 is positive? So it would be negative 6 and positive 8. I think that'll do it. That multiplies to negative 48 and adds up to positive 2. So this is the winning combination. So I'll put a little check. We're going to use this to expand. We're going to replace positive 2b with minus 6b plus 8b. That would give me 3b squared minus 6b plus 8b minus 16. And again, if I have the choice, I'm going to put the negative first. Now I'm going to group. We'll group our first terms, group our second terms, pull out the GCF from each grouping. 3b squared and minus 6b have uh, 3b in common. If I divide 3b into 3b squared, I'd get b. If I divide 3b into 6b, I'd be left with 2. The second grouping, 8b and 16, have a GCF of 8. If I divide 8 into 8b, I'm left with b. If I divide 8 into 16, I'm left with 2. Now I'm down to two terms. My two terms do have a common factor of b minus 2. So I'm going to put that common factor out in front, and I'm going to multiply it to 3b plus 8. And this would be the final factored version for letter C. Letter D, I'll come to this side. We have negative 20c cubed plus 34c squared times d minus 6cd squared. Whoa. OK, well, I noticed, first of all, the first term is negative, so that's not good. We're going to factor out a negative. It's fine. We're just going to factor out the negative. Then I notice that 20, 34, and 6 are all divisible by 2. And all three terms have a factor of c. So we do have a GCF and we have a negative we need to pull out anyway. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to probably start over here because I imagine I'm going to need all of this space. So I'm just going to do this. OK. And we're going to factor out negative 2 times c. When I divide negative 2c into negative 20c cubed, that's going to leave me with 10c squared. When I divide it in the middle, that's going to leave me with minus, because I'm dividing by that negative, 17cd. And when I divide negative 2c into negative 6cd squared, I end up with plus 3d. OK, so from here on out, I'm going to bring down my GCF, but otherwise ignore it. It's not going to be part of 
any other part of the factoring of the trinomial. It's going to be just separate, just out in front. From here, I can determine that A is 10, B is negative 17, and C is 3. That means that my target product is A times C, which is 30. And my target sum is B, which is negative 17. So I have some hints about these two uh, pieces of the winning combination. Because they multiply to something positive but add up to something negative, that means that they both must be negative. Since negative times negative is positive, and negative plus negative is negative. Um, let's start with what we're given, 10 and 3. Well, negative 10 and negative 3, since I just said they both had to be negative. That does not add up to negative 17, so that didn't work. Darn. Um, but how about negative 15 and negative 2? That multiplies to 30 and adds up to negative 17. So there is a winning combination. Uh, just a side note, if you check every single combination, if you check all of the combinations that multiply to 30 and none of them add up to your target sum, negative 17, you would say that it's not factorable. So if you try all the combinations and none of them work, that means that that particular trinomial is not factorable. Um, you need to make sure you check them all because numbers like 48 have a ton of factors. So that's why I like to write them down so I don't just keep going back to the same ones, but also so that I know I've exhausted every single combination. Okay, so we're going to replace our negative 17 CD with negative 15 CD and negative 2 CD. The order of these two, it doesn't matter. They're both negative, so we can't avoid the negative uh, in front of the third term. Um, so we're going to bring down the negative 2C, but otherwise ignore it. Then we have... Uh, what am I doing? positive 10c squared minus 15cd. So notice that the, when you replace the middle, it keeps the whatever variables there are. So it'll be cd. Minus 2cd plus 3d squared. Now that I have four terms, that looks like a negative. I'm just going to make sure very clearly that is a positive. Now we're going to factor by grouping. I do have to be careful here. So the first grouping is fine. But the second grouping, because of this negative, what I do is I'm going to change it to plus and then put the negative right there with that negative 2CD. And now I'm going to put my parentheses around the second two terms. Okay, I'm going to bring down my negative 2C, but otherwise ignore it. And my first grouping, 10C squared and negative 15CD, they have a common factor of 5C. So I'm going to pull out 5C, divide 5C into 10C squared, that would leave me with 2C minus 3 here, because the first term is negative, we need to factor out a negative, so I know this will be a minus here. 2 and 3, their GCF is 1, but they both have a, a variable of D, so we're going to factor out the D. So we're dividing negative D into both these two terms. That would leave me with 2C. Because I'm divided by a negative, that's going to turn negative minus 3D. Now, within the bigger parentheses, I have my two terms, and they do have a common factor, 2c minus 3d. So when I write my final answer, which I'll put over here, we have our GCF, negative 2c, our, uh, origin, that was the original GCF, then the GCF of our two groupings, 2c minus 3d, and then the leftovers would be 5c minus d. So this would be the final complete factoring for letter D.